Okay, I see this question quite a lot about these voltage regulators. I got four of them here. They all kind of look the same from the outside, don't they? Just pick them up. You got three terminals, three terminals, three, three terminals. So what could be different? Well, if you get looking when you flip them over, you'll notice there's no terminal under here. On this one, there's a terminal underneath. All right. This one, no terminal. That one's got the extra terminal. Now some of these, this one sticks up this way. Some of these, the terminal sticks straight out the back. That's the only difference, just the direction the terminal's on there. Still, it's the same terminal. Now what's the difference? You're going to find out that This is called a three terminal regulator. All right. It has three terminals, nothing underneath. This would be your four terminal. Fourth one under here. Now what's common is the field wire. On a Sears tractor, I don't know about other brands, but most of the Sears tractors that I've dealt with, green will be the field wire. All right. If you notice on the three and the four, the field wire is over here. That's where everything is the same. Now you see here in the middle we got a brown wire. All right, that's gonna go to the generator. But notice the brown wire on this one comes from underneath. This will be what wire hooks to the generator. And if you notice here, this is an orange wire. This wire is hooked to the L terminal on this regulator. That's the load. A lot of people run it for lights. That's what this orange wire goes to on a series of the lights. Now this one over here, it's lights here. Over here, this is the battery. This is the battery source. It needs a connection to the battery. Okay, one other thing to note while well, I got the ones here with the wire on it. See this, it's got two different wires hooked up to it, where it mounts. See the big hoop? That went up and that's how I grounded a key switch. This goes over the barrel of a key switch if your tractor has a plastic dash, and that's one way they can ground the switch out. This one just goes to a ground, all right? Now the reason you wanna do that, this one actually, I don't know, someone might've put those rubber washers on there. Here, let's look at this one. See how it's starting to rust on the bottom? It could lose ground at these mounting brackets. That's why they want you to run a ground wire. A lot of the wiring diagrams, I think it's number 23 on the Sears wiring diagrams, will show a grounding wire. So if you're bolting this to steel, it's still advisable to use a ground wire. See this wire here? It grounds the bottom of the regulator to this mounting plug. These are in rubber, so there's no way for ground to get through there, so they add this. On a lot of these, like this one here, notice the wire is rotted off and missing. If that is the case, oh no, I'm sorry, right there it is. The wire is still on here. If that's the case, you can go from the case of the regulator or one of these lugs right here. You can ground it back to here, just run your own wire to the bolt or ground it to anywhere. It just needs to be grounded, okay? This needs to be grounded. A lot of regulators fail because this ground wire gets rotted off. So I don't know if you can see that. I got an inside and an outside star washer. I like star washers. Those are a little small for the ground, but like when I ground something like this or any wire connection that I can, I always use a star washer. Those little stars will bite in and keep a connection longer than most things will. Longer than a lock washer or a flat washer will. Okay, now remember, because they rust, it's a good idea to run that extra ground wire. So what I did, I took the screws off 
and I took that little tab off. Okay, and right here they are. If you're cleaning up connections, clean the inside of this up too. All right. I took those off because usually on here is where they're stamped. And I don't know if you guys will be able to catch any of this. But this one right here says B-A-T. This one says G-E-N. And this one has an F on it. Alright. So I marked it here. Battery, generator, build. Nothing underneath. Now when you get into these four terminal regulators... If you look, this one's marked L, this one's marked BAT, and this one will be marked F for field. Some reason they don't mark this one, but it's G terminal. So this G terminal, the middle terminal on a three um, terminal regulator like this, has been moved down to here. All right. So if you have this three terminal regulator, like this style, okay, and you want to go to the four because they're easier to find, your battery wire over here, which probably is red, instead of being hooked on the battery here, you would hook it onto the battery here in the middle. The generator wire, it's usually brown wire on the Sears, I ain't sure on other brands. But the generator wire, okay, is no longer on the top here. So you got to move this generator wire down to this terminal. That'll be your new generator terminal, G terminal. Then your field is still in the same place. Now the L terminal that they add up here that is for load most things i see hooks it to the lights or something like that to run the lights on so you can replace a three terminal regulator with a four terminal and these are for starter generators now here again, I don't know if you'll be able to see this. Let's see if I can zoom you in. You can see I got an A and an F mark there. Can you see the A stamped in? Up here, can you see the F stamped in? Okay, that F is for field. Same as this terminal here on the regulator. All right, now I'll show you this other one. They're not always that easy to read. But looking at a diagram or something, you can usually pick it up and tell. This one here, I got the arrow pointing to the A, which is between my finger and that arrow right here. Right here, you can't hardly see it, but right above that arrow, there's actually an F stamped in there, and I don't think I can get the show in the camera, can I? When they get rusted, they get a little bit harder to see. But if you got one of these AC Delco generators, starter generator, may I say, the F will be on this one here. Here's the orientation with your pulley over here. The F Field terminal will be down here, and the A will be up here. Okay. Now, the A terminal is where this generator wire you want to hook up. Whether it's down here, or you've moved it to here. On a four one. It hooks to this A. That's the same wire it comes from the S on the key switch or on the solenoid, starter solenoid if you're running one of those, will come to here. So you'll have that wire coming to set a signal to start. 
and you'll have that G wire. And that's not the G wire. You'll have the G wire that's in the middle. Or if you move to a four terminal, it'll be the G wire from here. It'll go to this A terminal. On both of these, the F is on the right hand side of them. That wire is usually green on a Sears. I don't know about other brands, but the F to there. Okay. So there's two terminals that you need to know. The G terminal goes to A on the starter generator and the F goes to the F. Now the battery, the B terminal, that usually goes back up to the amp meter and it hooks to the positive side of the amp meter. This should have 12 volts when you turn the key on. You should be able to test and have 12 volts right here. Now when this thing's turning and it's producing electricity, it sends it back and this B is now your path back to the battery and that's how it charges. So you have to have this connection. And that's the reason it hooks to the positive side of the amp meter. Because when the charge comes out and goes into the amp meter, it makes the amp meter go the right way and show you it's charging. Now the L, like I say, that could be for load or lights. This is your battery on here. Um, I can go through this one time real quick. <coughs> see if you can see this. Okay, now you can watch me squiggle. Up here is the starter generator. Let's see. Start generator. This is the amp gauge. This is the regulator, and that would be the key switch. All right. Now, let's start from the beginning here. Over here, I got battery written. A battery will have a wire going to the key switch. To the B terminal, all right? That's how the switch gets power, and that's how the path is going to come back. Now, this S wire here on the switch, the, the terminal labeled S, is going to come out of the, this key switch and it's going to come over here to this A terminal on the starter generator, all right? Now, you're going to have an A terminal also on your ignition switch. If the unlikely event you don't have that, it could be hooked to the battery source. Okay? But usually the A. The A will come down here. It's accessory or amp meter. It'll come down here to the negative side of the amp meter and feeds power to the amp meter. Then it goes through here and the positive side of the amp meter is going to come out here and it's going to go to the B terminal. Now on the G terminal. The G terminal is going to come up here and it's going to go to the A terminal also. Alright. That leaves us with the F. The F is the field. It's going to come up here. Don't mind me crossing that wire like that. And it's going to go to the F terminal on the starter generator. All right, and then that should make it charge. One other thing I want to note is you don't have the mounting bolt right here and it's going to be to ground. You're going to have a wire coming from there bolted to ground. You want to ground that regulator. All right, that's for a three terminal regulator. Okay, that's what a lot of people's want to have, a three terminal. Now, people don't realize it, but an SS15 is also wired like this. All right, it's got a three terminal regulator. SS14s is like this, it has four. Okay, a four terminal regulator. <coughs> Okay, now we're going to do the same thing. The battery comes to the B terminal on the ignition switch. Okay. A terminal, accessory, amp, whatever you want to call it, is going to come in to the amp meter on the negative side. Alrighty, follow me there. 
from the positive side of the amp meter, we're going to go over here and we're going to hook right to the B terminal. Now, the S on the ignition switch up here, this S terminal again is going to come over here and it's going to hook into the A terminal of the starter generator. The G terminal, okay, that G terminal, here we'll put this on here, G, which is this one. Sometimes it sticks out the back, sometimes it's underneath like that. But it will also go to that A terminal of the starter generator. That leaves you with this F terminal here. This F terminal is going to come back up here and it's going to go to the F terminal on the starter generator. And that completes it all. Now like on a SS14 and stuff, this L terminal will go to the switch. We'll just make this a little toggle switch here. Okay. And then it'll go to your headlights and tail light. But that's how you would wire them up. I don't know if you can see both of them or not. But this is a four wire regulator. This is a three wire. You can replace a three wire with a four wire, or you can replace a four wire with a three wire. It's just you will not have the option to run your lights off the regulator generator.